Welcome to One on One, the Daily Items digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. This week's guest is Sunbury Mayor Kurt Karlovich, interviewed by reporter Francis Scarcella. Sunbury Motor Company. Austin Martin, Kia Elite Sales Consultant, Maranatha Christian School. Amber Wren, Certified Hyundai and Lincoln Sales Consultant, Seals Bavaria High School. Ian Chukuski, Certified Ford Sales Professional, Mount Carmel and Shemokin area. Christopher Stengline, Ford Certified Sales Consultant, Seals Bavaria High School. Tom Mertz, fourth generation owner, Sunbury Motor Company, Shikolini High School. A tradition of trust since 1915. Welcome to One on One. We're being joined this week with Kurt Karlovich, Mayor of Sunbury. Uh, Kurt, you've been with us before on here. Uh, this time we're going to talk, we're going to start current, and then we'll go to the past. All right. Currently, you have revamped the Sunbury New Year's Eve celebration. So two years ago, it got canceled due to extreme cold weathers. Last year, it got canceled because there was a lack of volunteers. And I remember speaking to you about that, and you said that that was ridiculous and you wanted this to make a comeback. You actually tried last year to do something last minute, if I remember correctly. You were trying to scramble and put stuff together. So you had a whole year to plan. So tell us what you did in that year and, and, and where it's led us to come New Year's Eve. Well, it's been a lot of work in the last year. Um, it was given to me by Councilman Jim Meister um, after SRI gave it to the city and they no longer want to participate with it. Uh, our city clerk, Jolyn Barner, has been a tremendous help with this, helping to put this all together for the last year. Uh, we've been hosting numerous uh, committee meetings throughout the year. We pulled in a handful of volunteers that are going to be helping out. Uh, but you're ready to go. I mean, you, you're ready to go with it. Oh, in the beginning of the year, we were a little worried about how New Year's Eve was going to turn out because um, none of us planned an event this large. And um, But now we're coming down to the final days of this, and we are excited to see everyone come out and um, see your downtown and Cameron Park completely packed. Uh, also, the, the one of the big things that, that uh, I've heard people talking about already are the two big screens that are going to be downtown with showing like the live feed of New York City, which is a cool idea. Where did that come idea come out of? So it was um, brought up by one of the volunteers on the committee. Uh, we were talking about how what can we do different, and we talked about the screens. We started looking in the screens. Um, the one volunteer actually purchased the screen, screen so that the city could use them. So um, we came up with, well, let's broadcast New York City. That's where everybody tries to go. Let's tell them, come to Sunbury. Sunbury is a major city here in Northumberland County. So come here if you want to see uh, New York City. And one of the things that I, that I didn't know personally is that the Cameron Park obviously has cable. There's cable running through Cameron Park. Apparently when they built it, they're, that's where they're hooking into. So I think that's a kind of a cool little thing for the city as well. Maybe you keep a screen down there and every now and again show something that's, that's going on. So I'm sure that's a possibility for you guys in the future as I was talking to some of the committee members. Uh, so with that being said, you said no matter what, rain, ice, sleet, snow, you're going forward. Yes. So just kind of like um, in reference to New York City, people go there no matter what because they want that experience. So we're trying to bring that experience to our city of Sunbury. We want to um, have our downtown contribute to this. We want the visitors to contribute to the downtown. This is going to be different than all the pr previous years that was planned, and we plan on doing this every year moving forward, and no matter what the weather is. And also, the, the kids section is up at the ice rink, and I know you Yes. Like, yeah. So we changed it a little bit for the, the family-oriented portion of this. Um, that way, if people don't want to be out late, it's going to be from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Sunbury Ice Rink. Uh, free ice skating, snacks, goodies, free entertainment. Um, DJ Alexander is going to be there. So it's going to be a great time. Are you going to go up there first and then come down? Uh, you might see me out there yeah. trying to skate. Trying to guys. skate, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be a long night for you guys. Yes. And was the was the volunteers a hard thing to do? Was uh, that still a hard thing? Volunteers is very hard. Not a lot of people want to volunteer their time and not actually receive something. So, I don't know, But fortunately, we do have a handful of um, great people that are giving back to the city right now uh, to make sure that this event happens. And also, you wanted to do something different as well as, as uh, you had city council pass an ordinance so that there's an open container law. Explain to people that are going to watch this what that means. And you said you were doing that for like the neighborhoods yes. so they could have their own cars. Explain that to us. So in the previous years, the city has <laughs> waived the open container ordinance for the, for our city um, for certain sections and areas alone. Uh, 
So this year uh, we looked into it. I, I talked with their police department to see what they could foresee the issues could be. Uh, I brought it up to council. Council voted in, uh, in favor of waiving the open, contour, um, open container ordinance across citywide. This is in hopes to bring the communities closer. If you want to go outside, you want to drink with your neighbors, you don't have to fear being arrested or being cited for having a drink on your front sidewalks or walking across to your neighbors. But there is law, the regular law still applies. Yes. So the only thing we did was we waived it so you can't be arrested for being outside with your bottle, whatever you enjoy drinking for the night. Um, but it does have to be in like a non-glass container. All other laws um, are still in effect. You cannot have an open container in your vehicle. You cannot be intoxicated in public and so forth. Does the mayor plan to drink downtown? I plan on having a great time. <laughs> with that being said, uh, it's been two years now since you've been yes. in office. So this is a, a big accomplishment to bring this back for you. Uh, you you worked with Triangle Tech on the light bulb. If you saw that today, you, you had that all with the students there, had that all redone. So there's a couple surprises with that. Uh, but now you're going to be, come January 1, entering your third year in the office. This year alone, though, you, you before we go way back, let's go into this year alone with the police department. Tell me what you feel you've done so far with the police department. And, I mean, the whole department has changed since you took office. So explain to us what, what your original plan was and, and is that being, and have you stuck to that all the way through, which it appears you have. So everything um, that I've planned from the, the very beginning, it does seem to be on process and continuing forward. Our police department has had a history of um, our, the leadership changing very quickly uh, throughout the department. And anytime you have a, a, an organization where the, the main leadership is constantly changing, it makes it very unorganized. People don't know exactly what's going on. So the first year was really trying to get things calmed down. Okay. Um, and then this last year that just passed, um, it was to rebuild the, the force. We started hiring the officers. We had the scheduling of when we we're going to actually hire them on. Um, then officer in charge, now our current chief, Brad Hare. And, he's you, been, and you made that decision to hire. He has hire. been a great asset um, lately. He has helped hold the department forward while we were down to only five officers working the, the streets. And, um, and you didn't take that decision with the police chief lightly either, because I know you did like a nationwide search on that. So yes. it came down to that, and you just felt that was the best candidate for that. I, I believe being an elected official, you have to be able to view all options. You have to be able to take everybody's opinions and see what is the best outcome for your what you want. And right now, the best outcome is Chief Brad Hare. So, you, so, so far, the department it, it's, it seems to have calmed down. There hasn't been anything crazy coming out of the department so are you happy with that and and you and now you and the officers are all kind of on the same same page now as yes. opposed to when it when it first came um, the, the department i can honestly say i believe it's it's operating as a true team right now and you did a staggered uh staggered approach to, to hiring the officers correct yes so explain how you did what your plan. so the reasoning behind the staggering hiring is because when you have only three officers that are the original officers from the department, they're not on the probationary period. They can they can do anything a law enforcement officer wants. When you hire a new officer, they are on a one year probationary period for an X amount of time. They actually cannot do things by themselves. So with the staggering effect, it allows us to bring in the new cadets. They are adequately trained by our senior staff members in the police department. And then when they get out to go on their own, we hire another one in. And we're just keeping that routine going forward. And, yet, and right now, the department has seven, seven, seven full time, and two part time, and two part -timers. Correct. And your plan is that get up to twelve before. It's good to say that is your goal and plan. To be honest, I don't foresee that actual number because we do have to be realistic for a budgetary. Um, sure, concerns. you made a lot of you made a lot of cuts in your own department this year to, to make the budget for the. Yes. The one thing you didn't want was taxes to go up, and and you made that possible with that. So, with that being said. We're here with Mayor Kurt Karlovich, and we'll be right back. The Sunbury Motor Company. Austin Martin, Kia Elite Sales Consultant, Maranatha Christian School. Amber Wren, Certified Hyundai and Lincoln Sales Consultant, Seal and Traveria High School. Ian Chukuski, Certified Ford Sales Professional, Mount Carmel and Shemokin area. Christopher Stengline, Ford Certified Sales Consultant, Seal and Traveria High School. Tom Mertz, fourth generation owner, Sunbury Motor Company, Chicklin High School. A tradition of trust since 1915. We're back with Sunbury Mayor Kurt Karlovich. So we talked about the police department, we talked about New Year's Eve. Uh, let's talk about the first two years in the office. One of the major things that you wanted to do <clears throat> was the Sunbury wetlands. 
up there uh, in the in the section up there. You wanted to revamp that and get it back. And I know you've said that that's one thing that you're still one of your goals yes. as mayor. So tell us wh- it, 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 the uh, where it stands, what you plan on doing with that project. So there hasn't been a lot of p- publicity um, regarding the wetland project right now because, um, to be honest, the wetland project is not the priority of our city's needs right now. It's just a great project that we, I believe, um, we should pursue. Um, throughout the last summer, our DPW, they did go out with a breast hog. We started clearing out a little bit of the dry portion of the wetland. That way the sun can get in, make it, the grounds a little bit harder. Had DPW going out there maintaining a little bit more around the edges, cleaning, trying to clean the property up. We had a company come in, we actually surveyed it because the wetlands property is actually, um, it's, it's, um, it's a bunch of smaller parcels combined to make a <clears throat> large area. Right. And that, and that's, it's also, there's a lot of red tape there for you. You were saying is yes. that there's, there's almost an entire acre that we cannot touch because it's federally regulated, regulated right. right now. Right. So when you went in there, when you start finding all these things out, but your goal is still before you leave office is to, to have a beautiful one of a kind city park. Something right. Yes. So with that was, that was one of your first project. And then, then there you have, you also had the police department building itself. Yes. You, you're now moving forward with that. That was one of your big things going into there. And with that, We'll talk about it. Was the was the a little bit in the beginning of the uh, not getting along with council so much, but that seems to have all ironed itself out. So tell us what your opinion is on that, and 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 now you have a new council person coming in. Uh, Beth Kramer decided not to run, so now you have Josh Brocious coming in. So you have a, you have those Jim Eister, Rick Reichner, you Chris Reese. So. It seems like you're starting to gel now better than you were two years ago. Tell us about that. So anytime you have a leadership change like we were just speaking about previously, it does cause um, instant chaos because no one really understands what's going to happen. No one knows what your v- real viewpoints are, what your, your plans and goals really are coming into an organization. With me coming in here as um, the newly elected mayor, it, it, it did throw a wrench in a lot of um, things um, regarding the city. The first year... It was a little chaotic. Um, Things smoothed out. And this last year, things have been going really well. Everyone, we learned how to work with each other. That's the key. And and I've been at council meetings where they said that, where it's a whole different story where everybody's working with with each other. So even if you have disagreements and you're still going to have those disagreements, you seem to now start to work together. Exactly. And And I've seen you guys out in public now as as going out to various different things. And you're never going to have a leader that agrees all the time with someone. And a good leader, you can bring up a conversation and say, well, why do you believe that's, that we should do it that way? And just communicate back and forth. Are you happy that that part's over? I, I am very happy <laughs> because we are finally moving forward with everything. Right. And you now are, like I said, entering year three into it. Uh, it's no secret also that you, you're full-time working, so it's so you're back and forth and, and doing your thing in the city. What are your plans? Like, what are your plans for the next two years? You have big things on... Uh, I know you had uh, uh, the whole code department thing with the with the apartment buildings you're still trying and various things that you were trying but tell us what are your plans in so the two major um, projects that we're doing right now the first one is the recodification of our entire ordinance system of the city we've been meeting um, for the past year working with an outside company and now the outside company gave us their legal analysis of everything that needs to be corrected so city council and us we've been hosting special meetings to review everything and Within the next couple of months, we're going to be pushing this out to for a vote, and it's going to be a, a very positive change for the city because all of our ordinances are going to be updated with current times. And you're, and that was one of the big things you wanted yes. to do in the first place. I remember we sat prior to when you were showing me so many outdated things that exactly. were in there. So this one, that's, that's one of the major projects. What's another major project? Uh, second project really is the police department building itself. Um, finding an actual structure for the department. So we're looking at the old, uh, we, we call it the Chestnut Street Warehouse. It's a, it's a big two-story brick building on Chestnut Street, catty corner from the Albright Center. Um, it kind of looks abandoned, but it's our warehouse. And right now, uh, that is the best choice to move the department. We have an architectural team looking at it. Uh, we approved the final projects for them to bring the bl- blueprints and the final cost of what it would cost to uh, create. Are you going to move all of City Hall in there or just... There has been talk. We're talking about it. We just need to plan more accordingly regarding. Well, would you moving. like that? I think the best um, the best idea is to put the entire city hall in one department. Um, that way, you have all of code in one area because code does work pretty closely with the police department. Mm-hmm. And you can have the treasures there. 
um, at the city clerk's office and so forth. And then the first floor, we can turn that into a financial benefit for the city. We can The second, third floor are currently rented out at City Hall mm -hmm. by CareerLink. So the first floor, we hopefully we can work an agreement out with the county if it were to come to this. And that would be a good thing for the city. And, and again, I think what you're saying is putting everybody in one building. It would. You and can... if we do choose the Chestnut Street to finalize the project, get the funding, the grants, and so forth, it's going to show all the big-time investors, hey, look, the city is actually putting its money where its mouth is. We're, we're investing in these delinquent buildings. We're rebuilding the structure. We're going to fix the structure. And in doing so, if we do complete this project, the entire surrounding community in that section of town property values boost it doesn't become an eyesore well, isn't that you were i was at a meeting that when uh the people from the state had come in and i think it was dced or one of them that said that like the the building block of your city is the police department once you once you showcase that everything kind of works itself yes. around that so you believe that I, I i honestly do because the police department is where everyone tends to go no matter what community you go to because they talk about the police department yes. first yeah uh, also, so that's your two big projects, and and you uh, were the, what the first Democrat in forever to, to win an election here in summer. So uh, I think that was kind of a shocking thing. And, and were you surprised at that? Now that it's two years later, were you surprised or were you? I in the beginning I was surprised, but now I'm I'm really not. Um, maybe because I got used to be on this side of the table. Um, the people of Sunbury, they, they really want to change. They looked at me as someone to bring the change. And I really hope that they are seeing the change, the, the positive change that has been occurring for the last two years. But when it comes to political lines at the local level, I really don't believe political lines have that big of an impact when it comes to making the communities better here. Right. You just, it's, it's such a small community that if you know you, you know you. Big exactly. kind of thing, yeah. So what are you going to do in two years? Oh, uh, a lot can happen in two years, as we've seen with the previous two. So one never knows what can happen. You know, you have plans. If the election were tomorrow, would you run? If the election was tomorrow, you might see my name on that. You ballot. might see you come back. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming, uh, Mayor Karlovich. We appreciate it very much. Uh, again, the city seems to be going on a positive side. There's a lot of good things starting to happen here. The, before we do go, I got to say this before we do go. The one thing that everybody is still talking about and you put this campaign on in April is the downtown businesses. So let's quick talk about that. Okay. What do you, what are your plans there? Because again, you walk down there, you toured all these cities. Is that something you're still really going to start pushing hard now? So again, that was just a, a, a little pee in the big pod kind of thing. Um, so the meetings that our city administrator has been having with DCED and so forth, um, it, it all combines everything into the big pot of what's going to be beneficial for the city's long-term future right now. And of course, we're, we're not going to be shutting down um, the commercial district. Uh, we want it to grow. Uh, in fact, we're still going to be bringing into the, I believe we're going to be bringing back the commercial um, property inspections and the vacant property inspections as well. So do you have any businesses that are that you've been reaching out to to come to Sunbury or anything like that? Is that is that another thing that you guys are constantly doing? I know you always are looking around for various businesses to come in here, but... A lot of people, um, and that's another thing, a lot of people will just assume we can point our fingers and say, guess what, well, we, we want a McDonald's. We're going to put a McDonald's here. We're going to put a business here. That's not the case. Well, a lot of these buildings on Market Street that are vacant, they're privately owned. So we can't just go in there and say, you know what, we want a business there, you need to put one there. It's really up to the property owners, but we can help make Sunbury, um, we can market Sunbury as a place to be to hopefully get in the renters or um, the companies that want to actually purchase the properties from the privately owned. Right. Did you learn a lot in two years? I, I learned uh, a lot. Was there a lot that you didn't, <laughs> I, was I, there a lot you didn't realize going into this? Um, being on the other side of the table, it's very easy to just point your fingers and say, hey, this is what's wrong. You people are messing everything up. Being on this side of the table, there's a lot of things you can't really talk about for legal reasons. There's all kinds of laws, no matter what it is from the from the bottom of the floor all the way up to the ceiling. There's there's laws for everything that we have to abide by. So now you so basically what you're saying is when you were on the other side and you were pointing at council, now you realize that sometimes there's yes, this thing. But I, I can honestly say that the city of Sunbury is 10 times better than it was two years ago. Perfect. Well, again, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Mayor Kirk Karlovich, City of Sunbury. Thanks for watching. Be sure to be on the lookout for another installment.